Hello my dear students. In this particular semester we will be covering a new interesting topic that is automotive electrical systems and the subject code it is AUE702. So first let us go through an overview of an electrical system that is present in an automobile. Now someone said that a car needs only two things to run fuel and electricity well okay three things you can count in but the point is a car depends on only these three things for basic operation how can that be you ask today's cars are so complicated well compare an old car with the modern one if you look beyond the obvious what do you find the basics are all the same nowadays it's only the application that's more complicated take electricity the essential electrical components in old cars and the new ones are practically the same. What are they? Ignition, starter, generator, battery and lights. But today's car also come equipped with electric wipers, electric gauges, electric windows and even electric mirrors. Most of the today's extras are just that extras. But all these components have one thing in common. They need electricity to operate. That is the common factor in all these newly modern components. So before getting into the specifics of electrical theory and how to wire your car, let's take a brief overview of the car's electrical system. All the components discussed here are in detail in their respective chapters. So the electrical system are divided into three major parts electrical sources electrical loads users of electricity and electrical paths so what are electrical sources so electrical sources consist of battery which stores electricity for starting the engine and the generator or alternator which provides electricity when the engine is running so electrical source are basically the source which is or it's the key energy which drives the all the components and the vehicle itself so except in the cases of extreme overload a correctly adjusted charging system will produce enough power to operate all the electrical devices in the car with enough extra to recharge the battery so what are electrical loads they include all the devices on the car that require electricity for operation some examples are the ignition system, windshield wiper motor, heater blower motor, horn radio or tape deck and lights. By the way, don't underestimate the electrical loads created by lights. It's common for a car to have more lights than all the other loads combined. 20 to 30 lights can be found in a modern car. And in some race car applications such as rally cars, off-road racers, IMSA GTO, GTP cars, the electrical load from the driving lights can be quadruple that of the conventional lighting system. So all these highly customized cars have manifold lighting systems which require more electrical energy. So now let us come to the electric paths that is the streamline of power electric paths includes wires of the cores in a, but a car steel body and the frame are also paths they are used as return path or ground between the loads and the battery and the various switches in the system can be included in the paths category the switches are located in the electrical path they act as a sort of gate permitting electricity to pass or to hold it back as required Together, these three parts from the electrical circuits which make electricity to perform the useful work. With this brief overview in mind, turn the page and imagine your study of electrical theory that is present in an automobile vehicle. So now let us start with the basics. Many people
that have been heard over the years that they have come to the conclusion that all the elements that go into a car that is electricity by a wide margin it is the most misunderstood electricity is a hang up for technician and engineers so what is electricity what is the force that sparks the spark plugs and the lights the lights is some kind of magic that an engineer or a scientist can understand no mysterious maybe but not magic let us try to improve on webster's dictionary so electricity has positive and negative charges it is an invisible force it can be controlled it can do work it can flow in a current from one place to place it can flow only in a completed circuit it can be stored in a battery that is the most important so let us summarize this thing because you have already studied basic electrical in first year so there are two schools of thought on which direction electrons flow in a circuit tradition theory contends that current flow from positive to the negative that is excess free electrons flow from a battery's positive terminal through the circuit and back to the battery's negative terminal however through scientist experiment this idea can be largely be replaced by the modern theory that electrons actually flow from negative to positive practically speaking when you wire a car it doesn't really matter which theory you accept but to avoid confusion this book assumes that current flow from positive to negative that is quite obvious that's the direction favored by the tradition so is the direction implied by all the standard automobile wiring diagrams So let us study let us do a recap so let us study ohm's law so ohm's law is the electrical law trying your thumb that marbles and your friends to squeeze together it works like thumb equal to marble x marble into pinch or volts or ampere into ohms in mathematics customary ways to show this equation that e is equal to i into r where e is volts that is the electrical pressure i is the is the electrical pressure so i is the amperes or current flow and r is the resistance in ohms so these are the basic things so you see it is a current carrying conductor over here in this particular diagram so when a wire conducts current it is surrounded by a magnetic field represented here by a series of concentric rings surrounding the wire so this illustrates the basic principle of electromagnetism so you see when there is a current through the conductor so if you orient the thumb so you will see your curling fingers will show the direction of the current So similarly if that conductor is formed in form of a coil so what happens in a coil so when a current carrying wire is wrapped into a coil magnetic field is concentrated enough to do the work such as in a motor solenoid or relay let us take the example of a bar magnet the coil creates lines of force and has the polarity for a circuit to be complete it is to have at least three elements a source of voltage that is battery or a generator a load that is a lamp or motor and a path that is cables or wires so let us correlate between work and electricity 
So in a car, electricity performs the work in two ways. It creates heat or it creates magnetism. All electrical components work on one of these two principles. So electronic components like radios and some voltage regulators work on other principles. But you don't have to deal with the inner workings directly when you wear a car. So these principles are not covered. Just one word of advice when dealing with electronic components, make sure that they are hooked up correctly. So heat is created by resistance because you see when current flows through a conductor it will produce I square R loss. So think it in this way when electric current moves through the wire and other conductors they either permit easy passage or they try to restrict the current flow. Restricting the flow isn't exactly friction but you can think of it in that way. It is not actually friction but it can be assumed to be of a friction. So one of the main automotive usage of electrical resistance is the light bulbs. The bulb filaments they get so hot that they produce incandescence that is emitting light. It's like that when you use a coat hanger to roast hot dogs over a campfire. It's like that only. After a while a coat hanger of the wire holding the hot dog gets hot and begins to give off light. The same principle is used in electric bulbs. Other automotive applications of electrical resistance are the coils inside the sending units of some instrument panel. Gauges, the rear window defogger, the cigarette lighter and the clicker mechanism in turn signal flashers. Other automotive components convert electricity into magnetism. When current flows through a wire, there is a small magnetic field around it. It's almost too small to notice. But if you wind a, a lot of wire into a coil, magnetic field is concentrated enough to do the work. Electric motors work by magnetism. Basically a magnetic field is generated by the coils of the motor, which act on an armature that drives the motor shaft. The principles of electric motor operation are covered in the later of the lectures. So electrical motors used in the cars include the wiper, washer pump motor, starter motor, electric fuel pump, heater fan motor and the motors of the power windows and seats. So electric magnets also has a role to play in the operation of these relays. Here magnetic force is used to open and close the electric circuits. A good example is the relay that operates in some current car horns. They are also a powerful re relay in starting the motor. These relays consist of a wire that is wound around the core. So ne next comes circuits. So up to this point you have read about how electricity flows when a voltage provides pressure to move the electrons through a conductor. So now, let us form a simple circuit with the battery. So here you see it is a series circuit. So you see the positive terminal of the battery is connected to end of one lamp and the negative, let, let us say this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal and the negative terminal is connected to the other end of the lamp. So in a series circuit the current has to flow through each component in turn as it flows through the electrical path. Note that the current cannot flow through the lamp because the switch is open but as soon as you close the switch over here that is in this diagram you see the lamp close because the circuit is closed. So now, circuit connections are two types. Either it may be in series or it may be in parallel. So here you see two lamps are connected in series in this particular figure. So let us assume 
that the resistance of the coils of the two lamps are R. The EMF source is E. This terminal is positive, this terminal is negative and I is the current. So what will be the value of I? I will be equal to E by 2R. because the equivalent resistance will be equal to R plus R. There's a series circuit, we all know this. But what will happen if they are operated in parallel? So R equivalent will now become, so let us say this is R and this is also R. This is E. This is positive, this is negative, this is I. So R equivalent will be R into R whole divided by 2R. So that will be equal to R by 2. So what will be I? I will be equal to E divided by equivalent R. That is R by 2. That is 2E by R. So you see what is the difference? So the current through each path in a parallel circuit is more than the current in a series circuit. The current is different because the resistance so here if you see this is I this will be also the total current is I over here so I will be equal to 2E by R so now, if you determine, it will be divided equally. So this will be equal to E by R th and this current will be equal to E by R. But here, the current will be equal to E by R in this case, E by 2R. The current is halved. So in a series circuit, the current is halved because the resistance is more. But here, it is not that. But current, if the resistance is same, the current is in both the paths are divided equally. So when a second lamp is connected, so when a second lamp is added to the circuit, the current has to pass through the switch and both the lamps. The switch and the lamps are in series with each other. So one bulb blows when both the lamps glow out. So this is a safety issue. So in a series circuit, if one lamp is out, then the circuit will be discontinuous and the other lamp will not also glow. But in a parallel, su parallel circuit, what will happen? Suppose this lamp is out, but the continuity of the current is met through the other path. So this lamp will still glow. So the reliability of a parallel circuit is always more than a series circuit. So these are the some basic things we are discussing in our course. So another is the voltage divider rule. So what is the voltage divider rule? So here the supply voltage is E and if this is R and this is R. So what will be the voltage? across these two bulbs. So let us calculate the current in the series circuit. We have already done that. So I is equal to E by 2R. So the same current will flow through this path. So what will be the voltage drop through this bulb? It should be equal to say V1. This is equal to V2. So what is V1? V1 will be equal to I that is E by 2R into R that is equal to E by 2. The same will be in the case of V2. So this is equal to V2. That means here if the resistance of both the bulbs are same they will be divided equally. But what about the parallel circuit if we apply voltage division rule. So if this is E the same voltage will be applicable for each path. So this will be E across this bulb that means V1 will be equal to E here and V2 will also be equal to E. 
so here in parallel path the voltage is not halved but for series circuit it is halved but what about the current if you see the current if i apply current division rule so i is equal to e by 2r so the same current flows through a series circuit but here what is happening here i is equal to 2e by r but the current revision rule is since they have equal resistances they will be divided equally so this will be equal to e by r and this will be equal to e by r so for equal resistances in a series circuit of two resistances like this the voltage is divided equally the current is undivided but for a parallel circuit always remember the voltage is undivided it is same for both the branches but the current is divided equally so the total current is i is equal to e 2 e by r and in each branch it is e by r e by r so these are the some fundamental knowledges that you know so today we will stop here see you in the next lecture thank you